a day grade tent. In this revision lesson, we're going to be looking at transverse pulses and waves, and we're going to look, basically look at exam type questions on this. So it says, which one of the following statements is correct? All waves are transverse, longitudinal, transmit energy and travel through a vacuum. Okay, so we already know that longitudinal waves are sound waves, and transverse waves can be water waves or light waves. So therefore, that's not true. And we also know that tra light sound doesn't travel through a vacuum. So therefore, the correct answer has to be that the all waves transmit energy. Now it says we've got three oscillograms shown below. Okay, so we're looking at three types of waves. There's wave one, wave two, and wave three. Okay, so we can see that this one's got a bigger amplitude. And what is amplitude? Amplitude has to do with the loudness or softness. And this one has got the same amplitude as the first one, but it is more frequent. It's got a shorter wavelength. So it's got a shorter wavelength. Okay, now it says, which one of the following is true? The wave showing the sound of the highest pitch. Now the highest pitch is the wave that's got the highest frequency, which means it's got the shortest wavelength. So therefore we agree that that has to be wave 3 and wave 3. Okay, now it says the wave showing the loudest sound is going to be wave 2. So therefore the correct answer is B. Okay, so bigger the amplitude, the louder. The higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. Two pulses, P and Q, in a string. Yes, P and there's Q. Approach each other at the same speed. Pulse P has an amplitude of plus 4 when it is in position X. Pulse Q has an amplitude of minus 6 when it is at position Z. Points X and Z are the same distance from point Y. The pulses both have a length of 8 centimeters. Okay, that's there and that's 8 centimeters. Pulse P and Q meet at Y, assume that no energy is lost. So first of all, it says name the phenomena that occurs when two pulses meet at position Y. And if you say interference, um, you're correct, but you're not perfectly correct because what you need to be saying is destructive, destructive. And why? Because the fact that the one is an, got an, a positive amplitude and the other one has a negative amplitude, therefore you're going to end up with a smaller wave as your final wave, and therefore it's destructive interference, destructive interference. Okay, next question. It says, make a label sketch to show what happens when P pulses P and Q meet at position Y. Also indicate the resultant amplitude. Okay, so as they come towards each other, what is going to happen? P and Q are going to overlap and you're going to end up with a resultant wave which is down. Okay, correct. Well, resultant pulse, which is down, and the resultant, you can see that this is positive 4 up and minus 6 down. So the resultant is going to be minus 2. So they've asked you to indicate a label sketch. So this would be the resultant amplitude, resultant amplitude of minus 2. And that is what's happening when P and Q cross each other. Right, next question. Nadine and Erin are sitting on their surfboards waiting to catch a wave. It's pretty cool. They rise and fall in phase as the crescent troughs pass beneath them. Okay. They notice it takes eight seconds between one crest passing and the next. So in other words, if we had to draw it, so we go wee like that and again. Okay. So from here to here, it takes eight seconds, eight seconds. So do you agree that that is the period of the wave? The period of the wave is eight seconds, okay? Marco on the pier manages to measure the horizontal distance between them when they are on adjacent crests and finds it to be 15 meters. So in other words, if Nadine is sitting here and Erin is sitting here, Marco has measured this and he says that is 15 meters. Determine the period of the waves, done. Okay, calculate the speed of the waves. Calculate the speed, okay. So we know that velocity equals lambda frequency, okay. But we also know that frequency equals one over the period. So we could actually 
separate that out or rewrite that as velocity equals lambda and instead of frequency we can write times 1 over period and they want the speed we've got the wavelength the wavelength is the distance between two consecutive or successive crests or troughs so that's 15 over the period and the period is 8 so then we can just whip out our calculator and we go 15 divided by 8 equals 1.875 so it's 1 comma 875 when we round it off to two decimal places 1 comma 88 meters per second right and those are the typical type of questions you'll get on transverse waves and um, pulses so please make sure you can do this and go through this section if you didn't understand this have a great day